When you went down there, what kind of gear did you bring? Like how what, how prepared were you for this? Uh, completely shoestring budget. Shoestring, but yeah, student dropped out of high school, saved up money from working at like the YMCA. Like I went down there wearing jeans and a t-shirt. Like, did you plan on trying to find some sort of a job? Like, what were you gonna do for food? And no, so this was the thing. I went down there as a as a, as a volunteer, just to experience it. You know, like, and then and then basically as i became friends with jj it was like he was like could you could you come back he's like you have access to like gringos and and people that travel he's like bring us tourists he's like we're trying to protect this river like now while it's still completely pristine mm. and at the time i was like well that's, that's that sounds great so i started bringing people we started tamandu expeditions and so it was like small time just bringing some tourists to the jungle showing them around taking them on night walks doing stuff like that um but it it it, it was a very much like there wasn't a plan i knew what i loved I didn't have a plan. I wasn't like, I'm going to be a jungle keeper. Like I just went down there and was like, this is amazing. And I want more of it. Mm. And then, you know, at that age, people are like, you know, what are you going to do for a job? And I was like, I don't know, but I'm going back to the jungle. Like, and then it was as, you know, then as we saw more of the forest getting destroyed as we were, were the trans Amazon highway cuts straight across the Amazon rainforest. You can drive from like Rio all the way to Lima. And so for the first time in history, they opened up a land trade route through the heart of the Amazon rainforest. And the final segment of the Trans-Amazon Highway was over the Madre de Dios ri River, which is right where we work. And so we saw the amount of cars in our region go from like 400 a day to like 800 a day to 2,000 a day. And all of a sudden these offshoot roads and all of a sudden the burning and all of a sudden places that used to be pristine and wild, all of a sudden we're seeing this horrific burning ancient trees cut down entire ecosystems wiped out and so then at that point i'm going okay it's not a joke anymore we someone's got to do something about this and then you know you look and you realize you're in the middle of the amazon rainforest there is no one there's no help coming like these these ecosystems are going to be bulldozed if nobody does anything so what regulations if any are in play obviously there's people that are going to violate those but yeah. are there regulations that are designed to protect those areas is there is there like some sort of a process that someone has to go through before they start cutting logs like the the thing is there's national parks there's protected areas there's indigenous reserves i mean we're in the country of peru and it's like there there's plenty there's a lot of protected land peru has done an amazing job of protecting a lot of its rainforest, they have the most crucial part of the Amazon because it's the Western Amazon. It's where the Andes Mountains, the cloud forests, and so the lowland Amazon, the most mega biodiverse terrestrial habitat that's ever existed. They've done a great job of protecting it, but there's a still millions of acres that are just jungle. And you're at the edge of human presence on our planet. So you're talking about like, okay, so you have a, a little city and you have the police and you have the forestry department, you have whatever else. The things around the city they can deal with, but if you tell them that two days up river way out there there's somebody cutting some forest that technically shouldn't be cut they don't care mm. they're not going to put resources towards going out they're not they're not going to risk getting shot they're not going to risk getting you know bitten by a bushmaster while they travel out into the jungle there's just not on anybody's radar so unless it's near them unless it's in their jurisdiction nobody does anything and as we've as we found out now, even when it is in their jurisdiction, half the forestry department just got arrested in Peru for actually helping the loggers. They had sort of like infiltrated. Um, yeah, and then of course down there you still have uncontacted tribes, and you have places where there's giant anacondas, and you have different territorial reserves. It's just like it's such a weird landscape that the idea of like enforcement, like when we've had problems, when we've had issues where we have to bring law enforcement out there we have to bring them out there like we have to get the boat the gasoline the food provide them with you know it's like we have to like basically take them on a tourist trip out into the jungle and then be like now go do police work it's very mm. difficult and so like when you when you hear this stuff you know like which like again what we actually we actually we have to have to eventually we have to tell we have to tell the people this story um how we got here how did like what made you reach out to me when you did well, um, I had seen a, a clip of yours that we talked about. Yeah. What was the clip? So, yeah, that was the, that was was the 2019 clip. That was when the, the Amazon fires went mega viral. Mm -hmm. And, excuse me, I, I threw up a video of me in the fires just, like, screaming and crying and being like, this is happening every fucking day and screaming. And it went viral. Mm. It went viral. 
And at that time, we had created jungle keepers and we had tried to protect. So we had a little bit of rainforest we were protecting. I think we had like one or two rangers. And then you shared it on your Instagram. And then it hit this level. It like went to the next level of virality. I remember because my cousin Michael called me and he was just like, Joe Rogan just shared it. And I was like, that's, that's not, there's no way that happened. And he's like, no, it did. And the, the amount of attention that we got from that led to eventually people reaching out. Um, this guy, Dax De Silva reached out and he was like, Hey, listen, you guys every year with the burning forest and the loss of habitat, he's like, I want to help. What can we do? What is, what is, what, what do you need to make this work? How do we save this ring for there? It is. Yeah. yeah that's that. The that's clip. the clip. Yeah. We're going welcome to the fucking Anthropocene. And what, what puts those fires out? Do people actively try to put those fires out or do they just wait till it rains? No, the people start them. That's that's the funny thing, is it is it I'm not gonna be able yeah, to stay this. here long because this fire is spreading, but everything behind me right now is the forest that I've been working to protect for the last thirteen years. It's burning like this every day. There are literally millions of animals in this forest that cannot escape right now. And if you think our planet can survive this every day in the Amazon, you have another thing coming. We have all the resources to protect this, to stop what's happening behind me right now, and people let it happen every day. Welcome to the fucking Anthropocene. So when they're starting these fires to make clear cuts so they can raise cattle, like what are they doing? Yeah, it's 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 basically their space, so we're going to use it. And so, like, ideally a person, if they wanted to use that forest, you could harvest the, the ancient hardwoods there and make millions off of it. You could use that forest to do like multi-tiered agriculture where you're producing tons of, of, of produce. These are people that are coming in. They're just clear cutting the forest. They're planting like cacao, papaya, grass for cows. Like it's, it's literally burning down your house to, to cook us a, a meal. And who owns that land? Well, that's the thing. A lot of it is indigenous land. A lot of it is, the, they call it like Brazil nut concessions, where it's just like areas where like you're supposed to be harvesting Brazil nuts. But a lot of times it is private land, but people there, there's people coming from other parts of South America and they're just coming in and they're clearing these areas and it's happening fast. And no one is there to protect. There's just not enough resources to keep an eye on it's just the vastness of it all there, there's a there's a vacuum in conservation there's a problem with conservation no one's going to pay you to go protect to go out into the wildest places on earth and protect these things like for the most part it's right. very difficult you can go get a job as a conservation biologist you can go um study things academically but to to go and actively do the work of protecting a rainforest or protecting a marine area that's sensitive that's crucial to species it's very difficult 